Back when it launched at 2020, Cyberpunk 2077 was a mess. The game was plagued with bugs, glitches, and poor performance. But now, after a lot of updates and patches from CD Projekt Red, the game has significantly improved in stability and overall performance. And Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the most requested games on my channel. I always get demands from you guys to cover it. And today, I will be fulfilling those requests. So let's not waste any more time, and let's get into it. Now in this video, I will take a different approach compared to what I usually do in my videos. Because I can divide most graphic settings in Cyberpunk 2077 to three categories or groups. The first of these groups include settings that do not have any significant impact on either the game's visuals or its performance. Like level of detail or LOD, for example, where here you can see that the mesh quality or geometry complexity of this house alternate at the exact same distance for both low and high, and the performance is also similar between the two options. Another setting is color precision, which should reduce color banding, but I can't see any difference between medium and high. And similar thing with subsurface scattering, where both low and high looks and performs similarly. And the exact same thing with this setting called improved facial lighting geometry. Motion blur also doesn't show any performance difference between off, low and high. And the last setting in this group is max decal, while it shows a small visual difference, the performance is similar between low and high. So for this group of settings, I recommend keeping max dynamic decals at ultra, since it's the only setting that shows a small visual difference, and for the other settings, any option will be fine. Now let's move on to the second group, which includes settings that can drastically affect the visuals but have negligible impact on the performance. First we have shadow settings. Cyberpunk 2077 has a lot of settings for shadows, for sun and moon lights and also for local lights. Let's start with local shadow mesh quality and unlike what the name suggests, this one affects sunlight shadows and not local shadows. Where well, here you can see that high adds more details as it uses additional meshes to cast the shadow compared to low. And performance wise there is a slight 1-2% difference between low and high. So here I recommend high. Next we have local shadow quality. This one affects the resolution and quality of shadows from local lights. And performance wise going from off to high costs around 3%. Here I recommend medium or high. Moving on to cascade shadow range, this one affects the distance at which you can see more shadows from the sun or the moon. Like here you can see that high has more shadows at a distance, like this lamp post and my character shadows. Performance wise when GPU bound, this setting can cost around 2%, but when CPU bound like here that difference increased to 8%. So here it depends on your CPU, with my Ryzen 5 5600X I found no problem using high, but if you have a weaker CPU go for medium or even low. Cascade shadow resolution is similar to local shadow quality, but for shadows cast by the sun and the moon, like here where only medium and high have decent quality, and performance wise this one doesn't cost anything, so go for high. Distant shadow resolution controls the resolution of distance object shadows, like here with this bridge. And performance wise this one also does not cost anything, so keep it on high. And the last shadow setting we have is contact shadow. This one adds screen space shadows to cover small details and objects, like here. And it can drastically impact the visuals, but performance wise there is no impact. So keep this one on. Now there are additional settings that can be included in this group. 
like depth to field which also has negligible impact on performance so if you like this effect don't worry and keep it on and we have also anisotropy which controls the quality of texture filtering and as usual does not impact the performance that much so here i recommend 16 and the last one is field of view or fov here by going from the lowest value which is 70 to 100 we can see a 4% drop in performance now let's move on to the third group which includes settings that can have significant impact on both visuals and performance let's start with the biggest one screen space reflections this one affects the quality of SSR and higher options produce better looking reflections and adds more details as you can see here. Performance wise this is a demanding one because going from off to low cost 5% to medium 12% to high 17% ultra 22% and finally to psycho a massive 56%. So here I recommend low or medium SSR. Next we have volumetric fog resolution. This one controls the quality of volumetric lights and effects. And it's more obvious during the night and street lights, like here. And this setting scales with the internal resolution. So for example, if you are using DLSS, low will look worse compared to low with native resolution where DLSS is disabled. Performance wise in a scene with a lot of volumetrics like here going from low to medium doesn't cost anything to high 8% until ultra 11% so here it depends to get the best quality if you are playing at a higher resolution like 4k on 1440p and you are not using DLSS or FSR I recommend medium but if you are using DLSS or FSR go for high or ultra and if you are playing at 1080p I recommend high or ultra Moving on to volumetric cloud quality, this one should adjust the resolution or quality of volumetric clouds, but I really can't see any difference between medium, high and ultra. And performance wise going from off to medium cost 4%, to high 5% and to ultra 10%. So here I recommend medium. Ambient occlusion of course adjusts the quality of screen space ambient occlusion or SSAO. Like here, turning off SSAO can negatively impact the visuals and make the scene looks flat. And medium and high options improve the intensity and cover more surfaces. Performance wise going from off to low cost 4% to medium 6% and to high 12%. So here I really don't recommend turning off SSAO and go for medium since in my opinion it's the best balance between good performance and visuals. Mirror quality adjusts the resolution of reflections and mirrors, like here where high looks cleaner and more stable compared to medium or low. Performance wise going from low to medium costs 8% and to high 18%. So here I recommend medium or high for the best quality, because gameplay wise these moments in front of mirrors does not involve much interactivity and any drop in performance should not have a significant impact. And of course ray tracing is a part of this group of settings. Now RT and Cyberpunk 2077 comes in three forms, RT reflections, shadows and lighting. Let's start with RT reflections. This one replaces SSR and makes reflections look more realistic as expected. And strangely enough using Psycho SSR costs more than using RT reflection. But going from Ultra SSR to RT costs around 33%. Visually the only downside is that RT reflections still relies on some screen space data and some reflections like here. Let's move on to RT shadows. RT sun shadow can significantly enhance the quality of these shadows and also adds tiny shadows for small objects like here. And performance wise going from off to on can cost around 13%. RT local shadow is similar and does the same thing as RT sun shadow but for local shadows like here. And performance wise going from off to on can cost around 16%. And the last rich recent effect and most transformative in my opinion is RT lighting which enhances direct and indirect lighting. 
Like here, you can see how turning on RT lighting enables diffuse illumination, which makes all neon signs emit realistic lights that bounce around and enhance the look of this area. RT lighting also enhances ambient occlusion and cover areas where SSAO is not effective, like here under this car. You can see how it's glowing with off and like on where it's properly shaded. Now when it comes to the difference between medium, ultra and psycho, ultra and psycho seems to be using more rays which makes RT lighting reach further as you can see here. And going from ultra to psycho adds a form of RT global illumination which makes light bounce from a surface reflect the color of that surface. Like here where you can see a yellowish light and psycho compared to ultra. Now when it comes to performance going from off to medium costs 38% to ultra 42% and to psycho 51%. So in general, only RT reflection and lighting in my opinion worth enabling here. And if you have enough performance to spare, I really recommend medium RT lighting at least. Now let's move on to image quality. The game currently supports FSR2 and DLSS. DLSS in Cyberpunk 2077 looks really great and better than native TAA which exhibit a lot of shimmering as you can see here and even in motion DLSS looks cleaner. And on the other hand FSR2 looks a lot closer to TAA and sometimes it can look better like here. And TAA has some ghosting problems as you can see here. Now if you can use DLSS, I highly recommend doing so. You will get better image quality, especially if you are playing at a higher resolution and good performance gain which you can use to enable some RG effects like lighting or reflections. FSR2 also looks good and doesn't have any ghosting problems like GAA. VRAM wise, I did not encounter any issues playing the game with 8GB at native 1440p using high textures. And here you can see the difference in VRAM usage between texture options. But keep in mind that ray tracing can also take more VRAM like here with RG lighting between off and psycho. And of course using DLSS or FSR can lower the VRAM usage. And last but not least let's talk about CPU performance. Now there is only one setting we talked about which affect the CPU which is the cascade shadow range. But we also have this setting called crowd density, which when GPU bound like here, going from low to high costs almost nothing. But when CPU bound going from low to high costs up to 21%. So I highly recommend dropping this one to medium or low, especially if you are having CPU performance issues or your CPU usage is high. Now based on everything we saw so far, these are my recommended settings. Let's now do a quick comparison between optimized settings and ultra preset without any ray tracing effect involved. Here at this scene we can see 73% boost to performance from ultra preset to optimized settings. So overall Cyberpunk 2077 offers a wide range of settings and options and there are definitely some performance wins when tweaking these settings. However, some of them are not showing any difference or not working as intended. Ray tracing is a great addition to the game, especially RG lighting and reflections, but enabling these effects comes with a big performance hitch. Using FSR and especially DLSS is necessary for better performance and overall cleaner image compared to native TAA. And with that we arrive at the end. Thank you so much for watching and for your time. If you enjoyed the video leave a like, if not leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for any future videos and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.